My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this Sunday's Liturgy of the Word is filled with optimism that Christ's work of redemption will succeed and the church will continue in time until he returns. In the first reading, Isaiah comforts the Israelites exiled in Babylon. In the second reading, St. Paul speaks of the whole creation waiting for the liberation of the children of God from the slavery of sin. In the gospel reading, Jesus speaks of the abundant harvest from the good soil and that more than makes up for what was lost in the stony ground and among the thorns. These readings encourage us to trust that our efforts to live Christian lives will not be in vain and victory will come in the end. The responsorial psalm, in fact, also shares the same optimism. The hills are girded with joy. The hills are covered with joy. The meadows are covered with flocks. The valleys are decked with wheat. They shout for joy. Yes, they sing. The words of the prophet Isaiah emphasize the promise that God renews with the disoriented people of Israel. They are also addressed to us as a call to hope and an encouragement to trust. They are addressed to men and women of our times who are thirsty for happiness and wellness in search of truth and peace, but unfortunately sometimes experience the disappointment of failure. Isaiah's words are an invitation to believe that God can change any situation, even the most dramatic and complex. The kingdom of God, which Jesus came to establish, was strongly rejected by the Judaism of his time, and even by some of the early Christian communities. Sadly, that kingdom continues to be rejected today. With the parable, Jesus presents to us the faith and generosity of the sower, of the farmer, in scattering the seeds, which is the doctrine of Christ, the teachings of Christ. Although these seeds may bear unequal or even no fruit, depending on where they fall, the path, the stony ground, among thorns, the good soil, they are destined to provide a wonderful harvest, right? A hundredfold, sixtyfold, thirtyfold. And the Lord wants to involve us, and that includes you, not just us priests, but you, by virtue of your baptism, in this planting of peace, joy, mutual respect, and love for God and all creatures. He wants us to have the trust with which the farmer throws the seeds into the soil. The farmer is aware that storms, drought, perhaps diseases and pests could destroy his work. Any farmer knows that. But he also knows that if he doesn't plant anything, nothing will grow in the fields except weeds. Parents, educators, teachers, catechists, priests, and others who in one way or another want to instill Christian values must always strive to be optimistic because, as we read in Isaiah, those who hope in the Lord will not be put to shame. So let us ask the Lord to increase our faith so that the indifference of the hard ground and the hostile spirit of the stony and thorny ground do not kill the hope of an abundant harvest. My dear brothers and sisters, 
We do not have control over the fact that there can be hard ground out there, that there can be stony ground, that there can be thorny ground. What can we control? That we strive, we strive to be good soil. And we strive to be like the sower who sows in abundance. The seed of which we speak is the Word of God. It is Christ, the living Word of God. It is a seed that is in itself fruitful. The seed in itself is fruitful because it comes from the love of the Holy Trinity. However, making it bear fruit depends on us. The seed is fruitful, but making it fruitful depends on us. It depends on how we receive and accept the seed. Often, we are distracted by too many interests and stimuli that make it difficult for us to distinguish among so many voices the one truth that sets us free. It is necessary to become good soil without thorns and stones, but plowed and hoed with care. It is up to us to be the good soil in which one bears fruit and produces a hundredfold, another 60, and another 30. In this Sunday's text, the Almighty God appears to us clothed with tenderness and care. He showers humanity with gifts of salvation. He patiently accompanies the people he has chosen. He faithfully guides the church throughout the centuries. He speaks, and he also works. He gives without measure. He is always ready to accompany us in our daily life, especially when we are weak and even when we do not correspond to his gratuitous and generous love. He is faithful to us. Let us be faithful to him. Let us allow him to accompany us. Let us invite him to our daily lives.